Hi guys, welcome back to DP TV with Sim. Uh, prior to this movie, you should have watched the orthographic tutorial where it talks you through looking at a variety of aspects, you know, how to read text as well. Today we're going to look at making a sloped block. So you should have already looked at the uh, drawing and, and have that open up as well, ideally. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through to the sketch menu and from the sketch menu I'm then going to decide to draw a rectangle. Um, this rectangle is going to be the base of the shape I want. So I'll go normal to as normal, best practice to see exactly what I'm doing. Now I've got two options here. One is to draw from the corner out this way, um, but that's not the best because it doesn't actually match the technical drawing that I've got. So I'm going to go up like this. I'm then going to dimension this. Click on the sides, drag it out. So 15.8 there. And then the top. 7.8, that gives me the overall shape. And I want to make this into my 3D block. So up to the 3D tools, hover extrude it, and it's going to be the full height of my block. So that's your basic premise. I'm now going to look at doing the stud on the top. So sketch menu, select the top face so that the computer knows what I want to do. So this one. I can go normal to if I want. And click sketch because that's my uh, next step. The best thing to do is just find the center of the stud. So to do that, I know how far down it, it's going to top the block. So I've used a center line from the middle edge of the block to get the nearest point, And it's 3.9 down. I then draw a circle from the bottom as well. As you see, I don't have to click on the radius, I can just type. And the radius is obviously half of the diameter, so if it's 4.8, it's 2.4. Again, into 3D. The highlight, uh, bo the box is already highlighted, which means that I can just enter my figure. And I'm going to fill it around the top like we have before. So just repeating some of the tasks and actions we've had in previous tutorials. This is another opportunity for you to use the font tool. So I'm going to sketch on the top of the stud. Go normal to. Just use the text tool. And click Lego. Now it's important here to click here and move it before you do any of the adjustments on the font. Otherwise SolidWorks can be a little bit finicky and won't do what you want. Set the point size. Hit correct. Now I can make this um, italic. And then using my cursor just fiddle it around until I've got it in the right place and I'm happy with it's in the middle. basic tools, we're going to have to extrude it. And we've got our basic shape. Now you'll notice we now need to consider where the slope sits. So I could sketch on the front face, but the best way to do this is to use the chamfer tool. So the chamfer cuts off at an angle. And you can see the preview in yellow. Um, on this bit, we've got angle distance. Now we don't know the angle, but we do know the distance distance. So what I'm going to look at here, I'm going to look at the figure. Now you'll notice it says D1 and then D2. That combines then with the figure that's on the screen here. So you can see it says distance 1, distance 2. Distance 2 goes down, distance 1, sorry, distance 1 goes down, distance 2 goes across. So if I type my figure in here, 7.5. And then in the top. Now you'll notice from the drawing that one of them is not 7.5 and it's this one. So I'm going to change that. As you can see, you can adapt the mend and change the things in the particular part of the file. Uh, with the chamfer tool, check it's right with the preview and then go and click it. And it gives us our overall shape. So now we need to consider what's happening on the inside and the bottom. Right, deliberately made a mistake here. So I'm going to shell this to 1.5. When I green tick it, I get an error message. Now that error message tells me that I have uh, that it can't shell into the shape. And the reason for that is our Lego logo on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to reorder my uh, task here in the manager. I'm going to drag and drop it down. You'll notice I've now put the Lego to the bottom. This blue line can then be lifted up and it removes it. So it's grayed out. So it's still there and I still have the operation, but it's now uh, changing the order. So now when I shell, I do the 1.5, green tick it, and the shape is shelled. What I now need to do is go back to my line, drag it down, and it reinstates that particular uh, boss of the Lego logo. 
and we have where we want to be. Right, I'm now going to sketch the interior. So if you look at the auto graphic, you can see that there is a cylinder in the middle which allows us to actually the Lego blocks to fit together. First thing I need to do is again the center line. What I want to do is I want to work out where the middle of this bottom edge is. Now my block is currently upside down from the version of the auto graphic. So I've either got a choice, I can I can look at the measurements again from the bottom or I can make my life easy and use the eight as it's probably rather than having to do any math. So set my center line, that's going to give me the center point of my circle. Same way that we did with the spud on top. I want to draw my circle there. Change dimension, again don't need to type in, don't need to type millimeters. Green tick it. And as you can see that's now floating in space and I'll make that infinite too. So by dragging my arrow I can drag it up and through. When you do this uh, you might find that when you green tick it that it actually then propagates um, through the top face. If it does what you can do is you can actually uh, cut that off later. Um, at the moment I'm going to check that it actually touches the top on the inside so I'm using the section view. So I'm going to drag this so I can see the interior view. As you can see there's no gaps or holes there. Uh, there's no bits where it's missing anything and towards the, the sort of the roof of the shape. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to red cross it because I don't want the section view to stay. I want to keep that because. So I'm happy that's all correct. Now what I need to do is then consider how I'm going to then um, put the piece of the fillet sort of web on the inside here. So how the web's going to sit inside. So normal tip. Now I'm drawing on the outside face because I'm actually going to extrude through the whole shape. I'm going to start off by drawing a center line because I know the distance from the front edge here on the slope. So at this stage what I'm going to do is I'm now going to make that 8mm. I'm going to go normal too so I can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to use the line tool and drag up from there. Now, as you can see, I need to make sure it's in exactly the right place. I'm going to come from the bottom face. So I've zoomed in a bit and now I'm zooming out again to allow myself to do it. Uh, it snaps automatically to the um, lines of place. So from here, double click on the screen to remove that, and I'm just going to green tick that. Obviously I'm not totally sure about the height, but we'll come back to that later. If I click Quick Instruction on that list, that allows it then the computer to ignore the line. Use the Offset from the tool. So now I click this, you'll notice there's a preview to the right. It's 10mm away and yellow. I'm going to change that to 0.35. And that gives me one side. I'm going to go bi-directional. So bi-directional, click that. And you can see the preview shows me the two yellow lines. Green tick that. And then what I can then do is close this off. SOLIDWORKS only works on an island principle, so that means that your lines all have to meet up around the edge. If they don't, uh, it won't understand what you want to do. So I'm going to zoom in here, just checking that that's in the middle. Happy with that. Okay, as you'll notice from the technical drawing, there's actually a gap where the where this um, web actually sits. So I'm going to start off by making sure that's the right height. I think it's two, so it's two in there. And as I said, I'm now going to make sure this is closed off. Now I could try and draw across here. The easiest way though is to zoom in. I've got some trimming to do anyway, so click on that line, double click, and up to my trim tools. Trim to place this ideal here, and then just snip away the lines. Obviously the center lines will also stop um, the trim tool, so you have to be quite careful with that. And now I've got my island floating in space. As I said, I'm now going to extrude this across the shape. So at the moment preview is sticking outside, I can drag it in the right direction and then what I can do is I've got an option here, I can say clear all. I mean you could give it the right distance, uh, you could go to next face, so there's lots of options for us to then do here. So now we'll do back to our section view and what we need to do is make sure that that top edge meets perfectly and as you can see as I move my way through here, um, you can see that it actually touches the top very nicely, so green tick that, I'm going to red cross it because I don't want the section view anymore and that's my shape. Okay, I'm going to now add some studio scenes, so I can add a studio scene there. Uh, equally, I'm going to add an appearance to it again, so back into my high-gloss plastics. Go to the red this time. Drag and drop it on. And we've got different options here, should we choose? And that's our shape completed. So thanks again for watching DT TV.